Okay, hello and welcome to the session on clinical data analysis. Um, in clinical data analysis, you might have data from a group of patients or you might have population level data. Regardless, there are, there are ways to analyze and present the data that are acceptable for scientific formats. So today we're gonna talk about what kinds of data are out there, how to do descriptive statistics, how to present the data, what the standard error means, and what are confidence intervals. We're also gonna look at values. We'll look at one and two sided tests and so you get a better understanding. We'll talk about correlation. Data is primarily considered to be of three different kinds. So there's binary data which can only be coded in two different values. So it only has two responses like gender. So gender is either male or female. So binary by definition means two. So it can only be coded or the response can only be two variables. There's categorical data. Under categorical data, you have responses that are more than two, but do not count as continuous. So these are still discrete kinds of data. For example, race or ethnicity. If we were to categorize based on race or ethnicity, we can't say one is better than the other or not. So this would be an example of categorical data. There is no ordering of it. Then there is continuous data. Continuous data, as the term suggests, means it is continuous. So it, from one variable to or one response to the next is the same as the second response to the third. So for example, age would be considered to be continuous data. Blood pressure would be continuous data. So in this data, you can have values ranging technically all the way through infinity. But in this case, for age, we could have it ranging anywhere from zero to 150, for example. And so zero to one would mean the exact same thing as one to two. There are different kinds of categorical data, or there is another way to look at the data categories. So there's nominal data. Nominal data is something that cannot be ordered, or it doesn't have any sort of rank ordering system to it. Gender, race are all examples of nominal data. The next comes ordinal data. Ordinal data can be actually rank ordered. So in depending on the study question or depending on the variable itself, you can rank order it. Ordinal data, some examples would be stages of cancer, for example, where you can rank order them from the first stage all the way through the fourth stage. The first to the fourth is a rank ordering. It doesn't mean one is better or worse than the other. The same thing for a Likert scale, which goes from strongly agree to strongly disagree. We can create categories out of them and then we can rank order them in that preference. It could go from strongly agree to strongly disagree, and we could say strongly agree being one and strongly disagree being five. And these are again arbitrary numbers. It doesn't mean five is better or worse than one. It could also go the other way around with strongly disagree being one and strongly agree being five. Then we have interval data. In interval data, the data is spaced out by intervals, and each of these intervals is exactly the same. So age is an example of interval data. So the age difference between one and two years is exactly the same as between two and three years. So the intervals in between these variables are meaningful and they're about the same. The last kind of data is known as ratio data. Ratio data is a specialized case of interval data where not only the intervals are meaningful, but also the ratios are meaningful. So an example of this would be the Kelvin scale for temperature. Both of these are examples of continuous data whereas these two are example of categorical data. Depending upon the study question, you might have a mix of both categorical and continuous data. Keep in mind that different tests have to be used for categorical data versus continuous data when doing statistical tests. 